Hey kids, welcome to uh, Unit 2 uh, Lesson 3 Attributes, Exercise Number 1. Kids, these next couple of lessons are very important for what we're going to do with this class and especially with the AP exam. You might look at this code here and say, it is easy, Mr. Rhodes. It's just printing off the X and the Y location and the direction and the remaining paint. That's easy, let's move on. Well, kids, when I hit run here, you're gonna see a whole bunch of errors pop up. And it's not gonna make much sense initially why. And honestly, even after this video, you might walk away saying, mm, I don't know if that totally makes sense. But over the next couple of lessons, we're going to start writing these private instance variables. And I think with a little work and a little time and a little practice, it'll make a lot more sense. So let's go ahead and hit run and talk about why we get this error. We get a whole bunch of errors here. And you can see it says X location has private access in org.code.neighborhood painter. And you're probably thinking, well, I didn't see anything public or private there. And we can actually go over to documentation and go into that very code.org painter class. And the first thing that pops up is this X, Y direction and remaining paint. And you're probably thinking, Mr. Rhodes, it's right there. Back here, I want you to notice one thing. It says fields and method details. And it looks like fields also looks like something else you might have saw. Maybe that UML. And maybe this goes back to our attributes and behaviors. What you're not actually seeing here, kids, is how this code is actually written in the background. And if I pop up this little code here, this is actually what's written. And you can notice it says public class painter, which is what we're doing. But next to those, you're going to see the word private is next to it. And these are called private instance variables. These are actually very important in Java and we use them quite a bit. We write these instance variables in a class to represent its attributes. And why do we use private? Private accessor modifier using a class that can only be called from inside that class where it's defined. It means you cannot access or call that method defined under private classes from outside that class. Hmm. Really, we have two different ways we can declare variables then. We can declare them as public, which we've been doing, public access to all of the classes. And we also have something now called private, which is visible to only inside the class. I also like this chart up here. It kind of shows who has access to what when we go through classes, packages, subclasses. And for me, this chart was always very helpful because it helped me understand where it should be private and public. Now, all of this goes back to that fun little graph that I haven't shown since unit one, lesson four, which are the different fundamental concepts of Java. And if you remember, it started off with our object and then we did class and then we did inheritance. Really haven't talked too much about polymorphism right now, but we will. We've definitely talked about abstraction. And this is the final one, encapsulation. And these are really the key foundational parts of Java. What's encapsulation? Well, it's an object-oriented programming concept where the instance variables of a class are hidden from the other classes and can only be accessed through the methods of the class. All this boils down into one fundamental concept. Whenever we create classes and variables within those class, we initially set them to private. 
Further lessons are going to talk about how we give access to those private variables. But for right now, any variable you declare in a new class is going to be private. I know what you're thinking, kids. You're saying, hey, Mr. Rhodes, I remember Unit 1, Lesson 11. In that lesson, we definitely got the X and the Y coordinates. And you're right. But you're also going to remember in that lesson, I told you we did it a different way. And if you look at the code now, you're going to see we have these git, git x, git y, git direction, git my paint. And that's how we get the coordinates to print off, not by calling it directly, but by calling a variable that has access to that private instance variable. You can see looking back here that we are getting that private access error. And all of that leads back to those private instance variables or encapsulation. There are several things to take away from this lesson. First, it's going to be this idea of encapsulation. Remember, encapsulation is an object-oriented programming concept where the instance variables of a class are hidden from the other classes and can only be accessed through the methods of the class. Remember, there's two ways we can declare variables now, and that's both public and private. And remember, under the hood or abstraction of what's really happening here is this. We're setting all of these locations to private, and we're not giving access outside of that class for it to be accessed. And kids, if you're thinking, well, Mr. Rhodes, we're inside that painter class and we didn't give that new object access to those variables. I think that's something we're going to work on in the next couple of lessons. Again, kids, if you're thinking oh, this structure doesn't make much sense right now, take a deep breath. Do not worry. I promise you in the next couple of lessons, once you start writing it, it's going to make a lot more sense. Hopefully. This video helped you understand attributes and private access a little better. As always, if you have any questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next lesson, kids. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.